Behold, the final chapter of Make Your Mark. No more episodes after this. None whatsoever. No siree. None at all. Before we get into this, I should warn you that this review is filled to the brim with spoilers for chapter 6. And while I did find some good elements to this chapter, I have noticed more than a few problems with it that cause me to question my life choices. Why do I keep reviewing this show? Why do I allow it to keep haunting me? Is it even worth it anymore? Well, I've come this far, so I might as well finish it. Right? Right? Anyway, know that I am not a reviewer that holds any punches. When I see flaws in a show, I'm going to call them out. And I will give it to you as plain and simple as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Anyway, episode one, The Isle of Scaly. This episode opens up with the group flying in the mare stream off to the Dragonlands, or as it is now called for some reason, The Isle of Scaly. But they nearly crash because the mare stream starts malfunctioning. After they land, they run into the dragons, the designs of which feel very very uninspired. Clearly, their animation budget was not high enough for multiple dragons, as all of these characters share the exact same character model, but with some slight recolors and optional hair. Also, why do they have hair? They are lizards! Another really important thing to mention about their designs is that the dragons all have cutie marks now. What? When did that happen? Why? This is oddly enough never explained, and it is never brought up throughout the entire chapter as to how this happened. One of the dragons, named Blaze, assumes Sunny is the leader of all ponies, and so she leads her away from the group for a private meeting. Ooh, I wonder what kind of interesting interrogation is going to be happening here. This should be fun to watch. While they have their meeting, the other dragons tell the group that they all woke up from a magical hibernation when the evil one came and captured two dragons, Lava and Jade, and the Shimmers haven't been too bright since then. What is a Shimmer? I don't know, some kind of magic level, I think. Like with most of G5, we aren't really given many details. We then cut to Opaline in her castle, where she is holding the dragons in the dungeon. We then get a villain song from Opaline, and I've gotta say, this just might be the best song out of all of Make Your Mark. It's got a very different sound and rhythm to it that the rest of Make Your Mark songs don't usually have since they all tend to be you know, generic pop songs. Thing is, the lyrics to the song are literally just Opaline saying, I am evil, in about 12 different ways. For example, here are some of the lyrics. I'm the queen of mean. Don't care about any pony other than me. Isn't that lovely? Don't ask me to be nice. I don't want to. I don't play fair. I'm giving you the heat you can't handle, and I don't care. I'm a villain. And while it is very on the nose, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. And I know a lot of people are going to have a problem with this because she is literally pure evil with no sympathetic motivation and no complex character. But I do actually have to defend G5 here. A lot of people seem to think that for some reason, pure evil villains are bad writing. But this could not be more false. Pure evil villains can work when done correctly. In most cases, so long as the villain is a serious threat, is interesting, and is fun to watch, there is no no reason you can't make a pure evil character. Take for example, the Fire Lord, King Sombra, Emperor Palpatine, or literally any classic Disney villain ever. The reason Opaline has never worked as a villain is because she has not been a serious threat. All of her plans fail miserably, none of them make any sense, and her main ability is stealing magic, but somehow she is really, really bad at this one thing that separates her from all other ponies. She's not intimidating, doesn't have any interesting connection to the main character, and is just all around not fun. But she's actually not that bad this chapter. The song is fun, she's growing more powerful and becoming a more serious threat, her plan actually makes sense, and her connection to Sunny… well, we'll get to that. Anyway, Opaline drains the dragons of their magic, and we cut back to the Isle of Scaly, where Blaze is interrogating the ponies. Wait, what happened to the secret meeting between Blaze and Sunny? Why are they all together as a group again? Did the writers somehow forget what was happening, like, three minutes ago? No? We're not gonna address this? Alright, fine. The dragons then learn that Sparky is with them, and they say that a hatchling can restore their shimmer. Why is this the case? Who knows? The shimmer is literally never brought up again. The dragons, unsure if the ponies can be trusted, bring them to see the Dragon Lord, who they wake up from hibernation. Dragon Lord Spike! What? What happened to Ember? Why isn't she the Dragon Lord? And why is Spike's voice so 
deep. Excuse my breath. Just woke up. It's really off-putting. Why is Spike suddenly a quadruped? I have so many questions and I know none of them will ever be answered. Spike invites the ponies inside his cave and Blaze questions Spike's wisdom because they do not know anything about ponies. But Spike responds by saying that he does. Spike then gives a massive exposition dump as to what happened centuries ago, where Opaline came from, and what Twilight's plan was. And buckle up because if you thought that Twilight's plan was done before and didn't make any sense, you are not ready for what's about to happen. So it turns out that Spike was there when Opaline was banished, which means he was also there when Twilight enacted her plan to drain all magic from Equestria. So if he was there for all of this, and was Dragon Lord at this time because it was right before they went into hibernation, then that means that the other dragons would have had contact with ponies as well, but if they had contact with other ponies, then why the heck did they claim not to know anything about them? I tell you, the continuity in this series just keeps getting worse and worse. What the heck was going on in the writer's room? Was there some sort of competition to see who could write a story that contradicts itself the fastest? But wait, it gets worse. According to Spike, Opaline was banished from Skyros, the land of Alicorns, and afterward attacked Equestria and the dragons. She drained the dragons of their magic to turn herself into a fire alicorn. And once again, we come to another major continuity error. It was established in a previous episode that Opaline knew Celestia and Luna as fillies, and at this point in time, she was already a fire alicorn. Yet, we are told here that she was wasn't a fire alicorn until she attacked Equestria. I was an alicorn of fire, of power. I just gotta sit here reminding myself that it's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> Twilight's plan got dumber. <laughs> How? Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> So it turns out that Twilight's plan was to drain all magic in Equestria to protect all magic, but then sent the ponies away with the Unity Crystals to hide it from Opaline, as well as the dragons with the Dragon Stone, which she also used to drain all magic in Equestria. Twilight then cast a protection spell around Equestria to protect both the ponies and the dragons from Opaline. And it turns out that putting them into a death-like sleep for hundreds of years was her idea of protecting them! There was no reason to do that! I can't even with this show! Also, why the heck did the dragons leave the dragon stone in a place that just screamed, I'm a magical artifact, come take me! Instead of, oh, I don't know, burying it deep underground somewhere, Opaline can't find it. Why do none of the characters in this series make any sense? There are a million other problems with the stuff that Spike is saying here, but I am already on page five of my script for this video, and we haven't even gotten past episode one! So I need to speed things up a bit instead of going through all the different ways that none of this makes any sense. Apparently, all the different dragons have some sort of special ability with fire now, and we learn that Sparky has a mythical type of fire called transformation fire. Never mind the fact that he's been shown to do, you know, far more than just transformation. We're also told by Spike that Sparky is special. Wait, hold on a second. A special one, separated from his parents at birth, has a unique magical ability, and is the key to restoring magic to help defeat the villain. Are you seriously telling me that Sparky is the chosen one? Anyway, the dragons agree to help take down Opaline, and they prepare to head back to Maritime Bay. The mare stream is no longer working, so the dragons give the ponies a ride back home. We also get a short clip of Opaline, who has apparently been off screen collecting a bunch of cutie marks. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that she's been going around collecting cutie marks and no one knew about it? No one alerted the main characters. I've said it a million times before, and I will say it again until it stops happening. Why is everyone so Dumb. My gosh, that was a rough episode. Thankfully though, we are past the worst of it. Episode 2, The Root of All Evil, Part 1. This episode opens up with Opaline using the Together Trees to steal a bunch of ponies' cutie marks all at once. While she does this, one of the guards in Zephyr Heights is using a tennis ball as a shield. <laughs> That's a nice callback to the movie. The characters then arrive at Maritime Bay, and the dragons begin feeling weak. This is because Opaline is draining the magic from the Dragonstone. If she does, then all of the dragons go back to sleep. Wait, I thought that it was the protection spell that caused all the dragons to fall asleep. Now it's the stone not having magic? 
But the dragons had all dragon magic for centuries. Why have the rules suddenly changed to where the dragons now fall asleep when it has no magic? Why didn't Opaline drain all the magic from the stone, then drain all the magic from the dragons while they were sleeping? Wouldn't that have made more sense? Wouldn't that have been easier? The characters then somehow come to the conclusion that because Sparky was the one who initially gave Opaline her magic, he is the one who can use the stone to take it back. I'm not sure why they think this, but you know what? This isn't the first time that the series has made wild jumps in logic to solve some sort of problem. I'm becoming very used to it at this point. Yep, Sparky is the chosen one. My life is over. Hitch gathers the ponies of Maritime Bay around the Together Tree. While he does this, the rest of the characters realize that the Together Trees are what Opaline is using to travel around Equestria and steal cutie marks. Upon realizing this, they rush to the tree to alert him, but it's too late. The tree begins stealing every pony's cutie marks. Mommy! I want it back! I Shut up, you're so annoying! Izzy goes off to warn the ponies of Bridalwood about the trees, while Pip and Zip warn the citizens of Zephyr Heights. Somehow, they seem to make the trip in like 10 minutes, despite it being a very long journey without the mare stream, but whatever. So, the dragons show up to Opaline's castle to try and get the Dragonstone back, but are quickly captured and thrown in the dungeon. Opaline then explains that the Together Tree in the castle never worked properly because she did not have any friends to unite with. But because Misty and her friends came together to defeat her, the tree was activated. She also mentions that she knows about Misty growing the Together Tree in Zephyr Heights with her friends, where she celebrated getting her cutie mark. And yet, somehow, Opaline still doesn't know that Misty has been going behind her back and helping out the other characters. Now, here you could say that she knew all along and that she was just playing dumb. But it was shown in a previous episode when she was by herself, she did not know where Misty was or what she was doing. There's also a later scene that will contradict this idea, but don't you worry, we'll get to that. Anyway, Opaline then comes through the portal to Maritime Bay with two of the dragons under her mind control spell. Hitch then shows some actual competence for a change. He also takes initiative and confronts Opaline in a battle. He does, of course, lose, but good on him for trying. That's it. We are now one step closer to getting movie Hitch back. I know it's probably never gonna happen, but a guy can dream. Hitch then loses his cutie mark to Opaline. Opaline then begins attacking the Bright House, but it is protected by a magic spell from the crystals. While she tries to break through, Misty distracts Opaline by running away with Hitch's cutie mark, which Opaline had dropped. Misty then tells Opaline that she has been sneaking around behind her back, and Opaline is all like, what? How can this be? How could I not have known this incredibly obvious thing? She knew about Misty being true friends with them, she knew about the Together Tree in Sephir Heights, but somehow she didn't know that Misty had betrayed her, nor did she know about Misty's cutie mark, despite knowing about the Together Tree, which was grown during the Cutie Blossom Bash. Why is Opaling so dumb? But wait, she gets dumber. She goes to Sephir Heights to steal the Pegasi's cutie marks. I guess she gave up on breaking into the Bright House for some reason. Not sure why, she almost had it, and that would have been an instant win. Oh well, I guess. Anyway, she goes to Zephyr Heights to steal the cutie marks, but she is stopped by Pip, who says that she can steal the most potent magic if Pip is singing. But for Pip to sing, she needs better acoustics, so she tells Opaline to follow her into another room to take her mark. Now, what do you suppose Opaline will do here? Will she... A. No, this is an obvious trap and steal the cutie mark now. B. No, this is a very obvious trap and steal the cutie mark now. C. No, this is an incredibly stupidly obvious trap and steal the cutie mark now. Or D. Please don't pick this option because it is an incredibly stupidly obvious trap. Oh, look, she took option D, folks. So, Opaline follows Pip and Zip, who try to trap her in a curtain, but they instantly fail and get their cutie mark stolen. Opaline then heads off to Bridalwood, but along the way, grabs Misty's cutie mark. Once in Bridalwood, she's ambushed with glitter, fruit, and jam in a bathtub! And whoever's idea it was to assault her with jam in a bathtub, I thank you for this randomness, because it is just so much fun to say, jam in a bathtub. Jam in a bathtub. Jam in a bathtub. Jam in a bathtub. Go ahead, try it. And if you enjoy saying it, Go ahead and drop a like on the video, and if it puts you into a bad mood, well, then I'm sorry I ruined your day. Can I have a like anyway? 
After Opaline steals the unicorn's marks, the characters realize that they all need to come together to power the trees. So they all round up the ponies in Equestria to gather around them while Sunny goes off to face Opaline. But before she goes, Sunny for some reason feels the need to grab that heart locket that Abrizi gave to her in a previous episode. You know, that heart locket that is obviously magical but it was never established in the show to be magical so Sunny has no reason to believe that it will help her in combat in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, she decides to bring it anyway because plot. So she arrives at Opaline's castle and they have what is some of the most forced dialogue I think this show has ever produced. Opaline pulls the classic hero villain trope saying, we aren't so different, you and I. And Sunny responds with, you don't know anything about me. And Opaline's all like, Oh, don't I? You don't study magic? You don't keep your crystals locked behind a magic spell? And I'm sitting here like, no, she doesn't do any of that. Zip has been the one studying magic this whole time. We've barely even seen Sunny touch a book, let alone study anything. And she didn't even know about that magic spell until today. She's not even the one that cast it. This trope only works if there's some actual similarities between the hero and the villain to draw from, but they have literally nothing in common aside from being alicorns. This conversation does absolutely nothing for the plot or the characters. It doesn't even get Sunny to start questioning herself. Anyway, they then get into a battle. Pew, 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 pew. But of course, Opaline wins and steals Sunny's cutie mark. But just when all hope seems lost and I'm not making this up. The ponies of Equestria gather around the Together Trees to sing a song, which then powers the Together Trees, which causes a rainbow to shoot out of Sunny's locket and attack Opaline for them because magic happened! It then holds her still so that Sparky can grab the Dragonstone and use it to return all of the magic and the cutie marks to all of the ponies of Equestria. The tree then steals Opaline's cutie mark and eats her, and Spike uses his fire breath to teleport them all out of the castle as it crumbles around them. And honestly, as ridiculous as all of this sounds, it's actually not really bad aside from the, you know, rainbow locket thing. That was a very bad deus ex machina device. I really don't think it was needed for the story, I don't understand why they chose to include it. They then gather around the tree all happy-like, and the episode ends. Series over. Goodbye! Wait! What is this title screen? Could it be a special episode? Secrets of Starlight? What have we here? Opaline's tree has opened a portal? Where might it lead? Gasp, a land of crystal? I love the crystal aesthetic. Is this another world they're exploring? Populated by a new kind of pony? Could it be? Genuinely interesting world building that doesn't contradict pre-existing canon? Where has this been? Why have we not been given this sooner? Despite this episode being twice as long as normal, there's actually not much to talk about here. Like I said, the characters enter a portal and then they find themselves in a world that is populated by a new kind of pony called Auroracorns. The ponies of this world are under the tyranny of a snow leopard named Alora. Alora uses her mind-controlling voice to put the ponies of this town, called Starlight Ridge, into a trance. While under the trance, Alora has the ponies search the sky for a special star that will allow her to travel between worlds. And yeah, in this world, these stars can actually be plucked from the sky. That's a cool bit of new world building. But what's weird is that she feels the need to mind control them, despite having an item called the Nova Charm that she stole from the town. Town law says that whoever owns this charm rules over the town, and so the Aurora Corns have to do what she says. And they are all very willing to listen to her. And at that point, the mind control seems rather redundant. Maybe it's just an extra precaution, I don't know. Now, this episode does a pretty decent job most of the way through. I found many parts of it to be very interesting and enjoyable. But as we draw closer to the end of the episode, things very quickly go downhill. The characters decide to trick Alora into abandoning the Nova Charm so that they can take it back. And they do this by creating a fake special star to distract her. Thing is, she brings the Nova Charm with her everywhere she goes. But for some reason, once she sees the special star, she intentionally leaves it behind when there was no reason she couldn't have taken it with her to see the star. And this special star that fools her is a bunch of light bulbs all tied together. Now, from a distance, maybe you could get away with it by saying that it looked like a special star, but Alora holds it and is somehow still fooled. Then they create a fake portal to appear in front of her that is made from a spinning umbrella and this still 
fools her. This was a fresh start to make a new villain that wasn't a joke like Opaline was, but she's being just as dumb as the plan is. But I guess the people behind this show have no problem with making the villains insanely stupid. It also turns out that the cure to the trance is conveniently the magical healing snow that surrounds them. Are you seriously telling me that no pony in a trance has ever fallen into the snow? Despite the fact that one of them was already established to be a complete klutz. Now that Alora has no way of controlling the ponies, she flees. And the characters then drop the Nova Charm, and out of it pops the special star. So the characters take the star and use it to return home. But they don't think that maybe, just maybe, they should use the star to close the portal behind them. Due to the portal being left open, Alora, of course, finds it, and she uses it to enter Maritime Bay, setting us up for the next chapter with a new villain. Wait, the next chapter? Does this mean... No. No! It can't be! The series is not over! This is not the end! We will get G5 episodes for years to come! I can't make it! I can't keep sitting through this nonsensical show! No! Make Your Mark has been a wild ride. After the movie came out, it was a show that I was excited to watch. But after the first few episodes, it became abundantly clear that this show was going to be an absolute dumpster fire. It had a lot of really good and interesting ideas, but very few of them were implemented well. I see endless potential with this series, and I genuinely believe it could have matched FIM in terms of its quality of storytelling, world building, plot, characters, villains, all of it. When I first watched A New Generation, there were some red flags, sure, but I never imagined it would get this bad. I want G5 to be good, I really do, but in all honesty, this show is terrible. The world building is broken beyond belief. The characters are so dumb so often. Opaline is one of the worst villains I have ever seen. I do think that this show has some positives, and if you like this show, that's fine. I'm glad you found a new show to enjoy. But I very much did not enjoy this show. Or rather, I did enjoy it, but for all the wrong reasons. I did, however, enjoy analyzing it, critiquing it, and I think it serves as a wonderful example of how not to make a show. And I do think there's something positive to be found in that where people are able to look at this show and learn from its mistakes so that they can use that knowledge to create something amazing. After all, good writing is just as much what you do as what you don't do. But Secrets of Starlight gives me no reason to continue reviewing the series. If you've been following me for a while now through this G5 journey, I want to Thank you so much for your dedication and support. This does not mean I'm quitting YouTube, by the way. I'm not going anywhere. Make Your Mark is just a chapter of my life that is now closing. Never to be reopened. Nope. Never. Never. Ever. Ever reopened. Nope. No siree. Well, unless they do something nuts, like bring the main six back like they did the pillars. Huh. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, but just remember, if they ever do that, I totally called it! Ha!